The future of Mars exploration is about more than just science. It's about inspiring the next generation of explorers and instilling in them a sense of wonder and possibility. Ellen Stofan. The year is 2029 and humanity has become an interplanetary species. After a successful seven month transit to Mars, a starship carrying 100 humans lands with perfect precision on the red planet, the first human set foot on Mars as the entire Earth watches, marking a historic moment for humanity and paving the way for future colonization. A future filled with mass space migration, Martian babies, and a self-sustaining Martian city. In the year 2023, the first stages of preparation are underway. SpaceX, NASA, and other private companies are working together to make this mission a success. The journey to Mars is long, with multiple stages, but humanity is determined. Working together, they develop advanced technologies such as rockets that can land on the red planet, life support systems to sustain human life, radiation protection, robust farming techniques and infrastructure that can withstand the harsh environment. During this period, the first orbital flight around Earth and the refueling of Starship are completed, setting the stage for a transit mission to Mars. In preparation for human settlement, scientists first plan to successfully land a starship on Mars with automated robots and life support systems to mine essential resources and build a base with several dwellings. Several key technologies are included in the cargo, including reusable transportation systems for interplanetary travel, advanced life support systems to sustain human life, radiation protection to shield against space radiation, 3D printing technology and infrastructure for safe and comfortable living spaces, advanced communication systems for maintaining contact with Earth, power systems to provide energy, and advanced robotics and automation to assist with tasks and minimize risks to human safety. With the technology completed and a Starship ready to fly, the first launch is televised across the globe as Starship successfully begins its journey toward the Red Planet. Seven months later, the rocket enters Mars's atmosphere at 7.5 kilometers per second and decelerates aerodynamically. The vehicle's heat shield and surface slow the Starship down until the last stages, where the Raptor engines kick in and flip the rocket vertically, allowing for a slow and controlled landing. Upon landing, a team of automated robots begin working on Mars, preparing the planet for human colonization. They start by surveying and mapping the Martian surface to identify potential landing sites and resources such as water and minerals. These resources will be used for fuel, life and building material. Specialized rovers then move to these sites and begin collecting water by heating up the soil to 200 degrees Celsius and 500 degrees Celsius. Additionally, excavator rovers are deployed to extract minerals and compounds that will later be used in the 3D printing machines to build the base. Maintaining a mining project of this size requires power for long-term sustainability. To achieve this feat, additional assembly robots have been prepared to simultaneously build a power infrastructure using solar panels. This power grid will provide energy for automated robots and prospective human settlers. Solar panel construction is prioritized in the first few weeks on the red planet as solar power generation is only 43% on Mars than what it is on Earth. In later weeks, as resources from the native planet have been mined, 3D printing equipment is deployed to build a habitat and infrastructure for human settlement. This includes landing pads, living quarters, a processing plant and research facilities. In addition, scientists have planned for potential failures and prepared mechanical robots to maintain and repair the infrastructure and equipment. The assembly is relatively short in time as the robots can work around the clock, mining, processing and building the base with the necessary infrastructure and support systems in place. The first human mission to Mars becomes a reality, paving the way for humanity to become an interplanetary species. As the engines roar to life, the first ever manned starship is launched from Earth, carrying a crew of 100 astronauts, equipment and supplies for their mission. The successful launch is celebrated on Earth and watched closely as the seven-month journey through space begins. The team, composed of aerospace engineers, life support system scientists, medical doctors and communication specialists, have trained years for this moment. On board the spacecraft, they focus on their tasks in preparation for landing and continue to maintain the ship's systems and their health. Finally, after months of travel, they approach Mars and begin their entry into the planet's orbit. With bated breath, the entire world watches and waits for the seven minutes of terror it takes the signal from Mars to reach Earth. Finally, it arrives. It's a success. 
Using the Starship's landing system, they touched down on the landing pad prepared by rovers with perfect precision. On December 16, 2029, the astronauts take their first steps onto Mars, marking a historic moment as humans become an interplanetary species. The achievement is celebrated across the globe. The team has little time to celebrate as they must acclimate to gravity and establish a livable environment in the harsh conditions of Mars. With a seven-month journey in space with no gravity, the muscles and bones of the astronaut take a few days to adjust before they can begin assembly of the living quarters. The Martian gravity is only 38% of Earth's, making the adjustment much easier and faster. However, the temperature on Mars is similar to the tundra on Earth, with an average of minus 63 degrees or minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit, making it impossible to walk outside without a spacesuit. A thin atmosphere with no magnetic field also exposes astronauts to radiation and solar flares. As a result, the astronauts are still living in the Starship for the first few days and preparing all the equipment to make the dwellings on Mars already designed by the robots habitable. As the unloading begins, astronauts must battle through frequent windstorms, sometimes spanning thousands of kilometers. The most extreme dust storms on Mars are global dust storms, which can encircle the entire planet and last for weeks or months, obscuring the surface from view and potentially posing a risk to surface operations. Every moment is vital as they work to ensure that their mission on Mars will succeed. The mission's first phase is set to last close to five years, with several new starships landing between that time and delivering cargo and more humans to develop the base. The primary goal is to assemble and build life support systems capable of protecting humans from the harsh Martian environment. The typical day for the astronauts consists of unpacking and collecting resources, interior assembly of dwellings, carrying and moving heavy objects, and scientific experiments helping to understand the red planet. This is made easier over time as the fitness of the astronauts improves and resources are being shipped more frequently using multiple starships instead of just one. Additionally, the gravity on Mars is lower, making heavy objects on Earth seem light on Mars. Walking and jumping are also significantly easier, making physical work much less strenuous. The first dwellings on Mars are a combination of 3D printed hard outer shells and inflatable pods in the interior. The hard exterior is made entirely from Martian soil and minerals mined by automated rovers and excavating robots. The hard surface protects the inflatable pods from harsh windstorms and weather, making it safe for humans to live in the long term. The assembly of the basic life support systems needed for a crew of 100 members takes several months to complete. Each pod is equipped with a MOXIE system to create oxygen using Martian resources. MOXIE works by taking in carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere and using a process called solid oxide electrolysis to break it down into oxygen and carbon monoxide. The oxygen is then separated from the carbon monoxide and stored for use in the habitat. At the same time, the carbon monoxide is released back into the atmosphere. Each pod is tested rigorously to ensure it can circulate oxygen without leaking. Additionally, power systems are enhanced and linked to pods to create an electrical grid capable of powering the entire base. Electricity is crucial to complete experiments and generate heat capable of keeping the pods warm. In addition to solar panels, the crew also installs small wind turbines capable of handling harsh and frequent windstorms and converting their kinetic energy into electricity. Back home on Earth, SpaceX and NASA are now engineering multiple starships per year to prepare for the first great space migration. As Mars and Earth orbit around the Sun at different speeds, the window of opportunity to launch a starship comes only every two years. The second launch window comes on January 21st, 2032. This time, three starships are successfully launched and make their way to Mars. The crew is now comprised of planetary geologists, environmental scientists, agriculture experts and farmers, sustainable energy engineers, plant biologists, social and medical doctors and architects. SpaceX and NASA look to propel the colony into a fully self-sustainable city with a wider array of expertise on board. The landing of the second settlers marks the beginning of mass settlement and sustainability on Mars. The three starships, each carrying 10 times more cargo than the first, help establish the first major landing port capable of holding 10 starships at once. Additionally, with the help of planetary geologists, agricultural experts and plant biologists, the first greenhouse is built. Using vertical farming methods, 
and soil transported from Earth. The technique allows humans to limit the use of water and maximize the production of crops, a process necessary for survival as water is limited on the Red Planet. Recycling also becomes a significant part of the colony as a water filtration system is assembled and a waste processing plant is built. Wastewater is treated and reused for irrigation and other purposes, and food waste is composted to produce nutrient-rich soil. Engineers work alongside rovers and automated robots to build a network of roads using Martian soil. The roads connect the main living quarters with scientific buildings, a greenhouse, a mining quarry, a processing plant and the starship port. The colony slowly turns into a small city. During this time, aerospace engineers and chemists convert local resources and compounds into enough fuel to fully refuel one starship and send members of the first crew back to Earth. A Mars to Earth transit is completed, and the original three-year mission of the first settlers ends. Back on Earth, they are celebrated as heroes, and lay the groundwork for the first commercial flights to Mars. With a successful colony brewing, and return flight from Mars now complete, the race to colonize Mars becomes an international effort. Several countries begin their own production of equipment and missions to fly humans to Mars. In addition, private companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic sign contracts with NASA and SpaceX to regularly fly supplies, machinery and materials to Mars, supporting the growing colony. The establishment of basic life support systems, capable of keeping thousands of people alive on Mars, allows SpaceX to fly a fleet of 10 starships simultaneously. Each starship now houses 200 crew members, including regular civilians and private paying clients, ready to settle on Mars permanently. The flight is dubbed the Great Mars Migration, and successfully lands all 2,000 passengers at the Starbase port. This becomes the first commercial transit to Mars in history, with many passengers becoming permanent settlers. With the help of autonomous, industrial-scale 3D printers, Martian dwellings are now built in just a few days, housing up to 100 people. The dwellings are interconnected with massive common areas the size of a football field. In addition, advancements have been made in producing food and resources on Mars, as vertical farms coupled with hydroponics scale with the growth of organic microbes, fungi and nutrients. As a result, multiple large-scale greenhouses now exist to feed the entire population. Plant-based meat production is also a staple in the colony, providing a balanced diet for all citizens. With the first mass migration complete, a local government is formed, including a small city hall. Projects to build recreational complexes, hospitals and schools are proposed in preparation for the first Martian baby and the next migration. Each citizen must work in the colony's growth and mission to become a self-sustainable city capable of supporting all survival, social and medical needs. In conjunction with international bodies, the local government starts promoting the Martian lifestyle to bring in more settlers from various countries. As a result, dwellings with unique architectural designs start to spring further away from the central city and international ports begin construction. The buildings and settlements become a source of national pride for many major countries. In 2040, flying in and out of Mars is standard. With multiple flights scheduled monthly, the frequent flights allow for rapid expansion of living places and a booming economy. Mars has now become a popular tourist destination, with increasing numbers of tourists visiting the planet each year. As a result, the settlers have established a thriving tourism industry offering a wide range of experiences from guided tours of the settlements and scientific research facilities to extreme sports and adventure activities. The city also hosts restaurants, cinemas and even a spa for those needing a quick break. A full-scale hospital is also completed thanks to the efforts of private companies on Earth, Martian workers and autonomous robots. This is shortly followed by the birth of the first Martian baby, preceding a Martian baby boom. Medical experts closely examine the baby's health and watch over their development in the coming years. With a rapid rise in population on Mars, a demand for energy is needed. In addition to the solar power and wind turbines, nuclear fusion generators are now being used to power the settlements to prevent power outages due to massive windstorms. This advancement pushes the colony to full sustainability in energy thanks to its enormous power output. Private companies now have manufacturing bases on Mars to produce and recycle batteries, build ATVs for local transportation and biosynthesize food. In addition, 
an underground transport train system is fully operational to help ship materials around while avoiding radiation and windstorms. Small company habitats are common and government officials regularly travel to the Red Planet. With a boom in economic activity, AI infrastructure and a productive workforce, Mars achieves full autonomy by providing all essential goods and services to its local residents. The colony produces all of its water, food, air, fuel, building material and energy from local resources. This thriving community becomes a symbol of human ingenuity and determination. It is a testament to what humans can achieve when they work together and explore the unknown.